everyone, welcome back to the Immigrant Programmers channel. My name is Kritika and in today's video we'll be uncovering some easy yet often overlooked techniques that will help you ace that code review. Alright, so let's begin. So first things first, let's remember the golden rule. Value your reviewer's time. So speaking from personal experience, some people treat their code reviewers as their very own personal quality assurance technicians. They put in zero efforts to find their own mistakes. However, for reviews to work properly, you need to make it a two-way process where you and your reviewer trust each other. So you need to make sure that you have kept your end of the bargain as well and you don't make your reviewer feel like they're doing all the work. This brings me to the very first principle. Before creating a merge request and asking whoever it is that you asked to review your code for, you need to make sure that you go through your code first. And don't just check for mistakes. Read the code as if it's your first time and mark any areas that you find confusing. Everyone has a pattern of mistakes that they keep on repeating inadvertently, but they want to avoid them. Look for such patterns, if any, and try to make your code robust enough to sustain them, or even better, try to prevent them altogether. You know, making mistakes is not the end of the world. It's a part of every programmer's journey. But if they happen too frequently and if you keep repeating the same mistakes, this tells your reviewer that you don't value their time. Neither you nor your reviewer should be wasting time in looking for a missing curly phrase or fixing the syntax of your code. That's what automated tests are for. They should be part of your team's standard workflow. And all the code reviews should be done after your code passes the automated test in a CI-CD environment. However, if the team slash firm that you work for doesn't work with the CI-CD processes, just like mine, there's still an effective way to make sure that your development environment complies with proper conventions and the way is to use linters and formatters. And if you want to know what they are and how you can use them to write the perfect error-free code, I've already created a video on it and you will be seeing the link right here flashing on your screen and I'm going to also put a link to it down in the description box. Coming back to my point, you are going to automate the easy stuff. Code reviews are not meant to find the syntactic bugs. Your reviewers expect better from you. Moving on to the next technique so I can better describe it with a personal life example. So I was a new hire in this company and I was assigned a project that no one else ever worked on. So I had to start this project from scratch. During one of my initial code reviews, my reviewer asked me why I predefined some constant with some specific values. Clearly because he had no idea about the context of the code as it was an entirely new project. So what I did was I scheduled a meeting with him to explain him the reasons behind my decision and he understood everything very well and he was also convinced with all my arguments. However, after six months, there was a new hire in the company and she was assigned the same project that I was working on before. And while going through my part of the code, she asked me the very same questions. Now it's already been six months. Who remembers everything they did six months ago? Not as if it was documented somewhere so that I can refer to it and explain everything to her. And being so naive six months back, I didn't even record the meeting with my code reviewer. Lol, just kidding. So the point here is, when your reviewer expresses confusion about how the code works, the solution isn't to explain it to that one person. You have to explain it to everyone. And the best way to answer questions is with the code itself. Code comments are surely an acceptable solution, but they're inferior to the code that naturally documents itself. Sometimes while working on new piece of code, you tend to revisit your old code that you might have written like months ago. However, being an evolved developer in that duration of time, you now surely know some newer and better ways to handle things. I think by now, you might know where I'm going to go with this. You now think to yourself, while I'm already here making some changes to this file, let's fix this other thing as well. But what we don't think of is, because of this move, our viewers are going to have a hard time figuring out what changes serve goal A and what changes serve goal B. Therefore, it is really important to make your changes atomic. Moreover, decoupling unrelated changes will allow you to send different pieces of code to different people and have them review those changes simultaneously. So the next technique is kind of the parent technique of the previous one. Try to separate functional and non-functional change. This is the one principle that I've violated I don't know how many times and I'm afraid that I learned it the hard way. So for example, if you make a small two-line change that affects the behavior of the code, but then you decide to format the entire file. Now your reviewer will have to rummage through the hundreds of lines of white space changes just to find those two lines of functional code or change that's buried inside. 
Isn't that annoying? Now the most obvious technique. Respond graciously to critiques. When you demonstrate an appreciation for constructive criticism, your reviewers put in more efforts and they provide better feedback because they know they can count on you to take their feedback seriously. Try to question your ways even if it's your reviewer that's mistaken. If the reviewer misread a certain part of the code, can others make the same mistake too? Does the reader really have to exercise that abnormal level of scrutiny to make, the, make sure that a particular bug isn't there? Is the code really so convoluted? Look for ways to refactor the code and add comments wherever possible to make the code intuitive to everyone and easy to comprehend. If the confusion stems from a particular piece of code or a particular feature specific to a language that you know about, but most people, they don't know about it. Try to rewrite the code using a more common way so that it's more obvious to the rest of the members in your team. So if you receive a note like, this is confusing from your reviewer, your first instinct would be to ask a follow-up question, which would be something like, what's confusing about it? But trust me, this can come across as a little crouchy. Instead, a better follow-up question to gather more information from your reviewer without sounding grumpy would be to simply ask, what changes would help? Meanwhile, your reviewer responds, you can give your code a second look. Usually, there's something or the other that you could fix to improve the clarity of your code. A revision would communicate to your reviewer that you're unable to change even if it's not what they had in mind. So that's it. These were some techniques that I learned in my career so far for an easy and smooth code review. If you think that I missed something or if you want to share some more techniques that have helped you in the past or that you learned about recently, I would love to hear them down in the comment section. Well, I'll be waiting to hear your suggestions and your views on this video and you know the drill by now. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already for the YouTube algorithm and please help other people as well by giving them a chance to discover our content. Thank you so much and until next time.